Welcome to K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, here today to preview the weekend for everybody because it is a big one for K-State. Going to host another slew of official visitors this week, and obviously there is a crown jewel in this recruiting class for K-State that they are trying to earn the commitment of, and that is Lincoln Cure, the five-star tight end from Goodland. Uh, K-State has seemed like the front runner for a long time. He's gone on his visits to KU, Texas A&M, and Oregon, and it still seems like it's K-State and then Oregon right there probably second. Uh, what What is the kind of thing that K-State has to do here to get Lincoln Cure to commit? Because this is one of those deals where – it feels like K-State's playing from ahead. So when you have that lead, what is it like in, when you're hosting an official visit, especially for a guy like Lincoln Cure? To be honest, I think that the one thing that K-State really needs to do to secure Lincoln Cure's services, I think, is just to kind of be themselves. I mean, that, that that's what's gotten them to the lead at this point and has kind of really put them out in front and – Everything being status quo right now for K-State with Lincoln Cure is a good thing because that means that K-State's still way out in front and that no other school is really putting up a, a big fight like Oregon, probably the closest, but I think that even Oregon is still pretty pretty far off in the distance uh, when you look at where teams are on his radar. So I think that you need to really just be themselves and the one thing that he kind of hinted at a few times coming up and leading into the visit is to try and do something unique because he's been in Manhattan a few times. Now this will probably be like, I think it's sixth or seventh uh, visit to K-State. So this is where you need to try to find something to do that's unique. And I'm really interested to hear how that goes because I mean, we've heard Jalen Cooper went fishing with Matthew Middleton and then uh, Isaiah Mizell went uh, mini golfing with some of the players. So I'm really interested to hear kind of how the uniqueness of the visit goes. With everything else that's that's gone on and feels like it's kind of built to this point uh, for K-State in terms of how their uh, official visits this weekend will go, where where do you expect the, the timeline to be for Lincoln Cure from when he gets to Manhattan to – when people might expect a commitment. So th that's the tricky part. And, and I think that there's, there's always a scenario where you can get a commitment on a visit. I mean, we, we've seen that with Martel Jackson. We saw that last week with Jojo Scott, but more often than not, I think that what you see is players kind of take a breather after the visit. And then a few days later end up committing to a school I mean, we saw that with uh, Dominic Mitchell. Technically, McGuire Richmond committed on Sunday and then uh, decided to announce on Wednesday. So it, it kind of varies. So m my guess, though, would be that he comes away from the visits and potentially even has an announced commitment date of like next weekend or next sometime next week or the week at the week following. And then announces his commitment then. And you said earlier, you still think K-State is kind of out in front. How much ground do you think teams like Oregon and Texas A&M actually were able to make up in this process or thought they were able to make up? I think that they've made up some ground, but I think that in the end, it's just K-State's been so far out in front literally since last June that I, I don't think that any school really could have came in and overtaken K-State because he, he's just stayed in such constant contact with K-State and how everything has kind of gone in his recruitment that it it's pretty hard to believe that another school would end up overtaking K-State. It's obviously a uh, big deal to K-State fans, and we'll see how it ends up working out as uh, they try to get Lincoln Cure on board. And, and like you said, hosting him for – you know, the millionth time and and then, you know, a Kansas kid. So you do have to kind of find some way to stand out, I guess. But uh, also, it seems like there's heavy mutual interest there. So we'll see how the Lincoln Cure thing plays out for K-State. And uh, you can stay locked in with everything that goes down with it over at KSO this weekend. Now, in terms of other guys in town, because it's not just a one-man visit this weekend, 
Uh, who are some of the other notables that will be in town visiting K-State? And where do things kind of stand with some of these other guys? Because I know that uh, they come at positions that K-State's still looking to add on to. Um, they, and, and certainly guys that are still high priorities uh, in addition to Lincoln Cure, just maybe not as much of the status that Cure has. Yes, there's two guys to really, I think, hone it on and kind of see what happens from their visit because they're probably the two most intriguing to me. And it would be uh, Arkansas running back Monterey Elston, who K-State's been going after for a really long time. That's another guy that has been on campus a few times now. And uh, K-State's been out in front four since they offered him during the fall. And you've kind of seen that they've always been each other's number ones. So I'm excited to see how this kind of comes together because this is the one that I think could come together really quickly. I know that Arkansas is also involved, but there's been reservations from a lot of Arkansas targets kind of about Sam Pittman's future and situation and kind of rightfully so, I would say. And that even though Arkansas offered, you kind of saw how K-8 has kind of extended the lead with Alston. So I, I think that kind of getting through the Arkansas official visit was probably a good thing for K-State uh, with Alston. And now you kind of turn the page to, okay, what, what can you do to close him out? And this is the first running back official visitor of the cycle. So it'd be nice to get this wrapped up during the weekend or the week following because that DJ Duggar ended up committing to Oklahoma State. River Peppers ended up committing to Iowa State. So that kind of puts all your eggs in the Monterey Elston basket, which is a good basket to be in because K State has had the lead for so long. And Monterey Elston, kind of a, a, another version of Dylan Edwards and Deuce Vaughn a little bit. So a, a good basket to be in. And then offensive lineman Keaton Jones is another one that I'm really intrigued to see where that goes. Uh, the Coffeeville offensive lineman. There was a moment where K State was way out of the picture and he had four official visits and K State wasn't one of them. And then about three or four weeks ago, that that tag got changed and it ended up just being uh, Missouri, Arkansas, and K State having him for official visits. And K State ends up bumping Ole Miss out of the picture. And then Texas Tech kind of cooled away as well. And again, kind of the same thing as Monterey Elston is, okay, in, and for Keaton Jones, it really makes sense. Offensive lineman, Sam Pittman, supposed to be an offensive lineman guy. Sam Pittman's future kind of up in the air. So I, I kind of think that Arkansas is probably a distant third, I would imagine, kind of going into this. And that leaves K-State and Missouri, where I think that it, it's – a big time battle and I, it's one where if you're a k-state fan and if you're a k-state you probably want to win because it would be a, an sec win over two schools so I, i'm really intrigued to see kind of how that goes and there's a lot of offensive linemen that k-state are close on so this would be one again where i've kind of talked about where the dominoes could really shake if keaton jones were to budge this weekend yeah, and this is obviously one of those that, I mean, you talk about the status there of, hey, you get the win over a couple of SEC schools, but in addition to that, I mean, the talent is there as well for Keaton Jones. He's an on three, four star, uh, so there's a lot to like one of the, the five best players in the state of Kansas uh, for this upcoming season. So those are some of the guys there. Anything else on the recruiting radar that people should be aware of as uh, we get into this home stretch of June that K-State is – really cleaned up shop in the last 10 days. Yeah, I think that the the one thing to really kind of point out again is we're, we're getting closer to July 4th, but we're also getting closer to that 12 to 15 commitments. I mean, k State's sitting at 10 now with seven already this month. And a couple of big fish still out there with Lincoln Cure, Keaton Jones, Brock Heath, Lucas Algeyer. He hasn't been rated yet, but I think that Leo Almanza might end up being one of the top ranked targets that K-State's hosted this entire cycle. So you kind of look at that and there's a lot of big fish still out there. So the, the recruiting ranking looks a little wonky right now, but it's also June and a lot of guys haven't been evaluated yet. It's kind of like what DY posted yesterday uh, when somebody asked, like, what does that say about like the, the process of getting evaluations? And it's just like, 
this is the same process that the coaches go through because some of the coaches didn't know about some kids that they end up offering in June either. So once the recruiting rankings get, get settled and posted, I think that we'll kind of get a better grip on where everything is going. But I think that this has been a really productive June for K-State. They filled a lot of needs. The defense had probably more needs in this class than the offense did. So I think that you're kind of seeing them really attack the defense, which has been fun. And then the offensive class, it, it has been really, really solid. And I think can get even better with adding Lincoln Cure and with adding a few offensive linemen, another receiver, and then getting somebody like Monterey Elston. So I think that we're kind of seeing the class come together more than anything else and seeing what they really prioritize and what they really need. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're, we're pretty early in this process for K-State to be taking guys just because they feel like they need to take them right yeah. right now. They're still in the process of taking guys that they see something in where that, you know, most of these guys have been in front of them at a camp or something and they're able to go, Oh yeah, that that's the kind of athlete we want playing here. Yeah. And they have rarely lost a target this cycle so far that you could say that they were really prioritizing and really wanted because if you look at some of these commitments that they've taken, like Sire Shilke's offer wasn't very old when they took him. And they took him over some linebackers that they had been recruiting for a while. Same with Martel Jackson at corner. His offer wasn't very old. They see him at camp. They get the official visit. They push for the commitment. Just because somebody doesn't have an offer for, for very long doesn't mean that they weren't prioritizing or it means that they missed out on somebody else. It means that they saw him and wanted to wrap it up really quickly because they hadn't lost anybody else, but they knew that if they pushed for a commitment for guys like Shilke and Jackson and Dominic Mitchell, that they could just get that wrapped up and kind of avoid the long dragged out process. Because like we've talked about, there are times where K-State will offer somebody and kind of a slew of other power four programs will come and get involved. So if you can offer and wrap them up quickly on guys that you really, really liked from camp, that, that's what you need to do. And that's what K-State has done. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, well, that is a look at what's coming up this weekend for K-State football. Certainly, if there is uh, anything that pops off over the weekend, we will be right here for you with it covered and uh, giving you the insight on the latest additions to K-State's 2025 recruiting class. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Head over to On3 and find K-State online. Stay locked in on all the news with K-State football and basketball. We are out of here back again on Monday, unless there's a commitment over the weekend, and we'll dive into it.